Hello and welcome back to the Hard West. Uh, today we're going to continue Vasquez's uh, role in the Wild West. Uh, the last time we had a couple of issues with loading the inventory. These times are over. Now it is time to finish this scenario. Now I want to just share with you a couple of things uh, that I discovered in between. We're just starting with uh, trading some snake leather boots for uh, the uh, for the time being so both of our um, injured uh, comrades uh, here now received a lot of boons um, as always when you do not treat wounds over a longer time they become boons and Senor Zacarias might be the 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 best example we do have one two three four five five boons um, which brings him to whooping 11 hit points minus one from the boots that's still 10 hit points look at his incredible aim 95 percent that is just outstanding so Zacharias will be by large and far one of uh, the most uh, dangerous beings i am just thinking about the amount uh, the weaponaries uh, that he's taking with him I like weapons that allow him to take a shot before, uh, so to take shoot, uh, two shots actually, and I think his Deadly Daringa is the only weapon at the moment that allows this. Anyway, so, Senor Zacharias, I'm not 100% sure about Vasquez because he got a couple of boons, one, two, three, four, bringing him to eight hit points, but he still has a gushing wound and a cracked skull. So these probably after the next fight will transfer into um, into boons. So he still has uh, wounds, which kind of uh, lets him end up with eight hit points as well. Uh, he's a bit slower on the movement side, but that's fine. We can keep him stationary. Um, we still got a lot of interesting weapons to deal with. Uh, probably this gentleman here, David O'Connell, has by far the worst aim um, in existence. But we already gave him the weird monocle, so he should be fine for now. Get some healing items. Very good. And last but not least, we have Victor Sankov who joined us. And he's pretty much okay with the Canon Calvera. Um, I guess we already used all of the new cards. Yes, we did that. And we got a, f a four of a kind for our sniper. And we got a not nice little straight uh, for Vasquez. Let's dive directly into the remainder of the adventure, which is Mission Ruins. They made the camp in the old ruins of the Christian mission. Amongst the many items left by the previous uh, occupants was an old notebook, apparently written by a monk who had come here with uh, conquest shells. Um, it spoke of a place of worshippers not far away, which once was inhabited by an enlightened man. Perhaps excavating the church could bring some of the answers. Unfortunately, it was currently occupied by the natives. Their blood was the price of admissions. Diego said he had no interest in slaughtering more natives or venturing deeper into the lands. He would stay at the camp and would wait there. O'Connell said he would uh, also stay back in the camp. Someone has to look over the peons and take charge of the natives. It was obvious for him that Diego could not be trusted, neither with the former nor the latter. Um, so, does this mean we just lost two further comrades? Oh no, only one. Well, we're down to three guys again. Let's send out some scouts far to the west. Got a new mission there. Let's decide to send out some more scouts. Another uh, another one uncovered. Um, we're still having enough food, so we should be fine for now. Let's take a look. The company came uh, upon an abandoned wagon lying in the open, left behind by an earlier group of explorers. There were no bodies, but plenty of supplies. Zacharias wanted to Vasquez. It could warned uh, Vasquez it could be a trap. Um, we received four bottles of liquor and a Lancaster pistol. I don't know, but the Lancaster pistol uh, is, I think, worse than the one that we do have. Well. It, it has no downsides and it allows you to shoot twice per turn, so it's actually not worse. It's 
pretty decent pistol. And we're giving him the Deadly Derringer because again, uh, weapons that shoot twice per round allow you to take a, uh, to take a first shot. Slaughter the natives of the Baron. I love it. Peans were sent into the uh, Barrow to slaughter the inhabitants. Every Barrow inhabited, regardless of gender and age, was slaughtered. The Peans brought back anything that appeared to be useful. We got a couple of Mandrake roots. That's not bad, because we are so far missing options to replenish luck. And Mandrake's, uh, Mandrake roots do exactly that. So... I couldn't buy them so far. It's a very nice circumstance that we found them here. And over here... Apparently... Gosh. Okay. So... We need to organize a hunt. So basically, uh, we ran out of food to clear the uh, to clear the uh, the next uh, one. What we're going to do is we're sending our posse out for a hunt. They will get a couple of wounds. Specifically, Victor seems to take a couple of wounds. The other two might be immune against all of the wounds because they only uh, they already had all of the wounds. So we are continuing to setting uh, sending them out for a hunt just to get the food. You can see on the lower um, uh, left hand side of the screen that we're now at 120. Let's see if we can get even more. 150, 170, 200. Perfect. So um, after that, we're treating Victor again. Victor Sankov gets healed from all of his wounds. Which should mean that we're now having yeah, only the slight wounds here. The good part about uh, giving these guys here all of the wounds is they effectively are immune against all of the other um, all of the other wounds. Only g gashing wounds apparently can reoccur. So Zacharias had one gashing wound, but we healed that off of him. Good. Which leaves us with 31 men. Let's check out the health of the men. That's 41. Good. We got 50 men uh, still. And we still have enough um, food. Let's try this again. There we go. Every Baron inhibited, regardless of gender and age, was slaughtered. The peons brought back anything that appeared to be valuable. We got the Nine of Clubs. Okay, good enough. Sometimes it takes apparently a couple of tries. There we go. Queen of Clubs. And we still got 20 men left. So here's a bonus hit point. And here's Shriek. Shriek is such a nice card. I like it. So we might want to give it to our sunny boy here. Oh, wait a second. We still got the king uh, left over. Good. Let's see what the last two options are. This area was peaceful and sheltered and much wildlife. It seems to be well suited for hunting. Well, we're again short on uh, short on food, which the boss hunted down several large animals, returning with a large amount of food. Oh, well, that's great. Well, 
Well, that's much, much more efficient to do it this way. Okay. Senor Zacharias apparently has wounds again. I'm wondering if he takes these wounds, if they would become new wounds over time. Unfortunately, we don't have enough missions to test that. Uh, at some point, um, you usually only get um, three or four shootouts per scenario, and that's about it. So the whole boons thing, that would be my only point of contention. It's a great idea, but it's a lot of downside for just a bit of upside. Holy Musket unlocked at the Fates Trader. Nice. Wait a second. So we can buy a sniper rifle here? Look at that, beautiful. 10 damage? Are you serious? That sounds almost too good to be true. So the normal musket is already eight damage, but the holy musket apparently is 10 damage. Which, by thinking about it, is just a hell lot of damage just for this weapon. So I'm, all, I'm almost thinking about whether uh, to take that as a second weapon over the Golden Derringer. Because the musket itself is really, really strong. And we got ourselves Snake Leather Boots, which I think, uh, realistically speaking, he has such a low movement... Uh, I'm torn if we want to give him the additional one extra damage and movement. I think we're going to uh, spare them for now. Two extra damage is just very helpful. Alright, with all, with all the natives dispatched, there was no risk in finishing the excavation. After hours of digging, they discovered a chest. The items um, held in there were as mysterious as the origins of the building. Uh, there's a serpent amulet unlocked at the Fates Trader. An old notebook that had clearly been written by a madman. It spoke of the chapel and a high, uh, high rock, a fate of dead gods and a red star. Vesket pocketed the amulet and uh, joked that the next task should be finding the chapel and burn it to the ground to spy the dead gods, their face or, uh, fate of the star. Um, let us double check the Fate Trader once again. I'm just curious what the last item is going to be. Serpent Amulet, 10 defense, 1 damage, um, at the cost of 3, uh, at a bit of luck, and you also gain uh, 3 heat. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting amulet. I actually like it a lot. The extra damage and the defense sound incredibly good. The maximum luck, uh, not so much, but that's fine. That's a pretty decent item, I must admit. Alright, moving on to the chapel. After a long and dangerous journey, um, the top of the uh, at the top of the cliff, he discovered an old chapel. Instinctively, Zacharias trusted, uh, uh, thrust his hand into the stoop located by the entrance and crossed himself. Vasket also crossed himself. Stared at, uh, Vasket stared at the liquid uh, in the stoop. He had no idea how long this suppose, uh, supposing holy water had been in there. After long consideration, he dipped his hand in the soup and crossed himself. Initially, the interior of the chapel looked like any other, but they exterminated it more closely and they saw, uh, saw it was covered in pictures and carvings of native pagan religion. The centerpiece of the chapel 
set where the altar should have been. It was an ornate pedestrian with a jade mask resting on top of it. Just uh, Vasquez seemed to uh, seemed mesmerized by the mask's presence. He slowly approached it, then grabbed it with both of his hands and thrust his face into the dead eyes. The mask embraced Vasquez's face. Oh my God. Oh, Vasquez, Vasquez is the masked man. Are you kidding me? The mask embraced a uh, face like a long lost lover. In the binding um, all seeing movement, he felt he was perceived, uh, he, he perceived all things. The feeling of absolute security and power overcame him. When he was able to look around again, he noticed the text on the walls, previously incre incomprehensible, were now perfectly legible to him. Zacharias watched in awe as uh, Vasquez approached the tables and read them around. They spoke of a temple beyond the mountains that held immense wealth and, and infinite power. Suddenly Vasquez went silent. He read um, on silently for himself. Sacrifice was required, the table set to gain access to the hidden city. The mask wearer must kill his dearest friend. Vasquez told Zacharias he knew what must be done. Are you shitting me? Midwest of the descent, Zacharias began coughing and said he felt ill. The same feeling overwhelmed Vasquez. He seemed the holy water had not been holy water after all. Luckily, it seemed the poison had there been uh, for a long time and has lost much of its potency. Okay, so I went through all of this to give the guys um, these boons, and now you're telling me that they are affected by poison. And by the way, haven't we just killed the masked man in our last adventure? I feel like we killed him before this even happened. Okay, and to be honest, like he received all of these boons and is now even stronger than before. The last two uh, boons were tra uh, tra last two boons were traded for a boon. Okay, well, that's interesting. We got ourselves the Jack of Clubs. Uh, what's missing here? We have a 10. Oh, wait a second. That's the wrong one. He's uh, totally fine. That's four of a kind uh, plus uh, ricochet shot. That's good. Let's see what we can do with the other cards. Because we have now the masked man instead of Vasquez. Interesting. Very interesting. So the masked man definitely has a couple of extra hit points to spare. And should we go for the full house? I think we should. There we go. Four movement, 30 extra luck. And we got ourselves uh, the Queen of Spades for chain kill. That will be interesting. He is invisible when not in sunlight. He has Queen of Clubs to, uh, for the Shriek ability. Has a ton of hit points and chain kill to refresh his hit points. That will be very, very interesting. Um, as for uh, our last companion, let's give him a pair. With extra defense and some extra aim. That's okay, he has extra movement. You know, by thinking about it, wait a second. Yeah, we give him two pairs. That's even better. 10 extra defense is nothing to sneeze at. I like it. Okay, perfect. Well, I don't know, but the Masked Man is probably one of the strongest characters that we had so far. 12 hit points, constant regeneration, lots and lots of uh, extra defense. He's at 20 defense just from the get-go, 75 aim, deals a lot of damage. Probably only second to Warren, the character that we had before. 
Uh, from the hill, the masked man Vasquez watched the camp. He felt something must be wrong. Things were too quiet. Oh. Hell yeah, let's proceed to combat. <clears throat> it says Diego would pay for his treachery and blood. Have we seriously been uh, been backstabbed by Diego? This was in a difficult situation, but his goal was finally within reach. He would do whatever it took to fulfill his destiny. All right, so we have a couple of enemies standing like right here, and once again we're fighting in the four. That's a clever usage. That's a clever usage of the map, by the way. O'Connell on the other side almost bleeds out, which needs, uh, which means we need a swift person. Um, Vasquez isn't the uh, uh, the masked man isn't the slowest. Might as well want to take Victor, also. The Masked Man certainly is one of the most sturdy uh, ones. This here shouldn't trigger the uh, the shot because he's still hidden technically. There we go. All right. Victor, Sanko, solid kill. If we were to ricochet, do we have anything to ricochet off? All right, so a ricochet here would mean that this guy takes five damage. I'll take it. That's the first kill. Switching to the sniper rifle. That would be three damage. Unfortunately, we can't ricochet another time. That's a that's a problematic position. I don't want to rush in too fast. That's a bit of an issue. This guy could definitely backstep us, but we only have 10 turns and it's a pretty long distance, so we need to be aggressive here. I still think safety first. So we're flanking him. And although he is in full cover, the Holy Musket deals 3 damage to him. Lots of movement on the map. Let's start with the obvious. Which is effectively gunning down the native, uh, the native gunman. Um, this here wouldn't be a kill. We have reloaded. Let's drain his luck. Well, or let's just kill him. That's an option, of course, as well. We reload it. Um, I think one of uh, the options here is to get the sniper into the sniper's nest on top here. That will allow us to take shots into different directions. I like it. So we basically have one scout and two people just 
taking the uh, taking the high ground. So by moving to here, can we see someone? We can't, but maybe. No, that's not an option. Just looking for a ricochet shot, to be honest. It's not an option either. Barely out of ricochet options. Reloading. And our musket has a 100% chance to hit him. Nice. Well, we effectively do have two snipers, it appears. Moving on. Let's be clear. This here is a very aggressive move, but having 12 hit points and such a strong character makes up for a lot of uh, that aggression. Um, so, I was just thinking, my problem is this wall here. What's a better place for the sniper to be at? I mean, we could position ourselves down here. Issue is these wagons are in the way. Maybe... Yeah, let's just give ourselves a prayer. Uh, unfortunately, did not get the blessed aim, but that's okay. I was hoping for either blessed aim or blessed legs. The position up here looked great on paper. In reality, it wasn't that good. So we're now moving on. Victor reloads. And I think we can, yep, take this guy out. Perfect. We're still staying up here because I don't see why we wouldn't have that high ground. Which is taking the time to reload all of the weapons. All right, moving in deeper. I don't know if someone's here, so this is actually a pretty exposed position. As for the ricochet shots, we still can't ricochet off of anything. Which means I am inclined to move even further with our sniper. Again, eight hit points, lots of movement range. It's not the worst, uh, not the worst uh, character to actually take a couple of movements. These guys here know what's up, and they are taking shots. Is there any object to bounce off? So Okay, so we would have an object like back here to bounce off. But that's pretty far away. And again, we don't know what's inside of the church, so that's a bit the dangerous part of it. Moving here. Let's just flank this guy. Well, it should have let us flank this guy. Apparently, it doesn't. I found O'Connell in time and treated his wounds. Moments later, he was ready to join the fight again. There we go. O'Connell is back. Let's go, baby.
This here is a pretty safe position. The map ends here, so I would assume moving there shouldn't be an issue. Well, begged Vasquez to stop this madness. Well, I think we just found where the enemy was. Which also means we can move him out of the tower. This guy is going to go down. Alright. Easy enough. Let's use the ricochet. Finish him real quick. Didn't even take our full turn. And we all know that that's going to be a true Mexican standoff. aggressive movement towards the enemy. The advantage if you do have strong characters is that you don't need to play as ultra safe. All right, everyone took their position. And it's go time! Moving deeper into, uh, into the enemy's camp. Our two main characters stand in the entrance. And there is, by the way, a side entrance. Perfect timing to have a flank. I'm just not 100% sure if the flank will arrive in time. I have the suspicion that these guys will kill each and every one inside before the flank even happens. There we go. Three damage. Reloading, and we're taking the Holy Musket here. By the way, just out of curiosity, no, we can't, we can't use any luck-based shot. Um, and it's okay, we can take a hit point damage. That's not an issue. Hundred nineteen luck. Wow. I mean, although he's in full cover, right, we still have 100% chance to hit him. Which is massive if you think about it, because it means we can just shoot people in full cover. Diego, that was a mistake, my friend. Time to pull out the, mas uh, uh, the musket. Ooh, he's an evasive one. All right, fair enough. Reloading. Moving into yet another firing position. These three guys here have a very, very bad time. Oh, four. Where is another one? All right, let's go, baby. So we got the holy musket, but apparently our sniper can't see anyone. Oh, that's a bummer.
Same issue here. Can only mildly injure the gunman. But look at that. We I think we got uh, Diego right in front of our gun. There we go. Passionately at the remains of his oldest friend. Zacharias moved to console him, then saw Vasquez was cold and firm as stone. His protege was beyond sympathy now. Okay, we can't fire at anyone with Zacharias. Uh, might as well think about whether or not we want to move him back here only uh, with O'Connell here. He only has a couple of hit points left. Let's move him to the flank. Okay, so as I was saying the last time, with a musket we do have a 100% chance to hit someone in cover. Small uh, start to deplete his luck. And we'll continue to hit uh, this guy here. There we go. Same scenario on our side. We're going to continue hitting this gentleman. And it feels really bad to be the last marauder. <clears throat> yeah, not, not going to happen, buddy. Nice try. Moving in. And there we go. Vasquez went on an adventure that had consequences no one could have foreseen. Oh yeah. The boss hunted down several large animals and returned with a large amount of food. Um, yeah, well... Let's burn the forest down. We don't need to hunt anything. Uh, I guess we'll just look after the man. Still a couple of them were injured. And as for our companions, I think we have four again, if I'm not mistaken. And... Yeah, from the way it seems, we have also gotten some new cards. So we got Senor Zacharias here with all of his glory, our sniper. Um, we got Victor Sankov, who's kind of our backup sniper. The Masked Man, who did incredibly well the last um, session. And we have David O'Connell, whom we can give uh, another elixir as well. He needs aim. And we wanted to probably give him. We would wanted to probably give him also a couple of better weapons. A musket is a good idea. The pepper box really wasn't the best weapon. I think we still had a cannon calera left over, but I might be wrong. Well, we can always buy another one. Anyhow, um, there's the last Mandrake route. Perfect. Gosh, we have so much stuff here. And he certainly needs some sort of aim 
because working with uh, such a low aim is just tedious. And he still has a weapon that even gives minus to aim, so that's not really going to work out. Plus 5 aim for him, that's good. We uh, created a full house here, four of a kind here, full house here. That's great. So I guess we use all of the cards. It's just O'Connell needs our newest um, edition, probably needs some more aim. He's at a really, really no low number and we already gave him uh, our trinket that uh, that offers plus to aim so he's now at 55 which isn't great specifically since he has a pepper box in his hand so let's find a different weapon for him and once we do have a different weapon we should be ready to go So yeah, here we go, Cannon Cavera, kind of an overall good weapon, and we can also get the Holy Musket, because quite frankly, why not? Um, our backup sniper had the normal musket, might as well give him uh, the better version of it, which is the Holy Musket. Okay, so, Holy Musket, there we go. Holy Musket, Holy Musket, Holy Musket, gosh, they all have the Holy Musket now. O'Donnell, Cannon Quevera and the Holy Musket, not too bad. The Holy Musket on top of it uh, obviously provides five additional aim, so that's not the worst thing ever. And yeah, good enough. I think that that, uh, that we do have an incredibly strong team. My question is, where do we need to go now? There is yet another fa uh, Fate Trader here. Not surprisingly having the exact same offer. And I guess I'm missing something. So, all of these here offer no option to continue. There's a mine over here. Can send men into mine gold, which we do not need. We don't need additional gold from the river as well. We can get 10 additional men. That's okay, we have been with the Fate Trader. Something's odd. I mean, all of these here are explored. And the way I do understand the storyline is we effectively now would need to kill our best friend, which we just did, in order to get to this place with incredibly wealth and riches. Okay, that's strange. I think I'm missing something here, guys. Obviously, we can't get over the river back to the other side, which means either it's the village where we only can get additional men. That's okay. I mean, maybe we need 50 men. Let's just get a couple more. There we go. And for good measure, we get another 10. So we're now at 70. That's fair enough. Here we can get additional gold. That's okay. So what? We have enough. There's the mine. Where we can get additional gold. Okay, fair enough. 
So the last thing that we did is we had been at the at the old mission camp. Um, we can check for the health of the men. Okay, did that. We can check the health of the paws. No one needed any uh, anything. We can organize a hunt. All right, no one needed anything as well. There is nothing that we can do here. And it almost looks like we're supposed to go into this direction. But there's just this Fate Trader over here. That's pretty much it. So far I have never seen that you need to search for a place. Usually the game gives you the option to find the new places. I'm confused. I mean, what is the game expecting? I can't kill off a character from here, so it's not like I can say Senor Zacharias needs to be shot. The masked man already killed his best friend. Hmm. That's super strange. Vasquez went on an adventure that has consequences that no one could uh, have foreseen. Okay, when treacherous Diego and his native soldiers were dead, Vasquez shows no sign of regret. Zacharias uh, hid his worries over what Vasquez has become. Meanwhile, the red star is glowing brighter than ever, clearly showing their destination. Vasquez ordered the remaining men to move to the east. Aha, there we go. There we go. The road led into a massive pile of rocks. Vasquez was convinced the Golden City was somewhere beyond it. After two days of hard labor, they finally managed to pass the rocks. Hidden in the rubbles of an ancient ruin was uh, a village. They discovered a container made out of solid rocks. With great effort, they managed to pry it open. Inside, they found a strange uh, scripture covered in what looks gibberish. Vasquez found he could read them effortlessly. Uh, the scripture described a wall of skulls that bared the access to the most sacred place its creator had delivered, left it incomplete, uh, deliberately left it incomplete. Only by completing it could be brought down, and completing it meant sacrifice. About the rituals, the text described numerous rituals in great detail. Amongst them was an ancient ball game that had been used to determine whether one of the team or another would be sacrificed. Uh, the text describes um, a couple of gods. Okay, good enough. Uh, the text describes even further gods and even further gods. I do have the distinct feeling that I need to know the names of these gods. Of course, I haven't remembered them. An ancient uh, court used to play a game uh, to please the gods. A ball and a ceremonial de dagger set next to the field of play. Baskets ordered the peons to play. 20 peons were striped. To the west, lined up in two groups, Vasquez quickly explained the rules to them. The team with the most goals would uh, most goals would sacrifice the others for the glory of the gods. The peons immediately leaped into action, playing for their lives. Finally, one of the team emerged victorious. The losers kneeled to meet their fate. Uh, as their throat were, uh, throats were slit one by one, the blood filled the previously invisible pattern on the floor, revealing an inscription only Vasquez could read. The earth creates life. One of the last structures in the area was a tomb. It probably held a little more than a rotting body, but uh, right now the party was able to, uh, the party was after skulls to complete the supportantly. The men cleared the, uh, uh, the tomb's entrance and ventured inside. In the dark interior lay a huge pile. Uh, soon after entering the tomb, the peons begin to crouch, several of them dropping dead almost instantly. With their last breath, they manage to remove the chests from the tomb. Inside them, Vasquez found skulls with the names of different gods engraved on their foreheads. God, we already lost 50. Man, wow. Vasquez tried to insert the skull. 
All right, there we go. Now I need to know the names. The first school vesker that entered before the name uh, of. Let's start with the first god. The man watched the wall uh, expertly, but after a long silence, it became obvious nothing was going to happen. Okay, we need to go back to the huts. So, the goddess of the moon, the goddess of earth, the goddess of spring, the goddess of the stars, and the goddess of um, of uh, wind. So we need uh, Tsilulansi, because earth is the first one. Then we have creator, time, or uh, woman. We need um, Umeteold. Earth creates, and where is the god of blood? Universal power, god of life. So it's either the god of life or the god of war. Mix Kotal. Alright, let's try this. Um, I almost forgotten a second one. No. So we had uh, the earth creates life. Okay. Earth. That's Tlalti Kultli. Okay. Creation. Umiteort. And where's life? Quetzal Kotl. Alright. Let's try it again. The earth creates life. There we go. Difficult enough. A wellspring. Everyone had been healed. And everyone is affected by endurance. Whatever endurance means. Oh gosh, the game is behaving weirdly now. Just wanted to check what endurance means, guys. Tough as nails plus two hit points. Oh my gosh. That means we're at 16 hit points? Are you kidding me? That's well, indeed tough as nails. Okay, whatever happens in the temple must be hardcore. Let's proceed to combat. Here we go. As they walked up an incredibly long stairs, Vasket wondered what would head, uh, what would await him. I wonder the exact same amount. Horrified, Zacharias finally understood Vasquez's intentions. He would stop him or die trying. Are you ki uh, kidding me? Alright, so now our mentor also betrayed us. He was the best sniper in the pack. Very, very, very unfortunate. So, let's shoot up to six times. Victor Sankov. Good enough. Moving over here. We are going to shriek. Everyone takes three damage. These guys here should have been uh, taken three damage as well. Gosh, I hate it. That should have worked. What the heck?
All right, we're taking a couple of shots, but nothing completely unusual, to be honest. Another shriek and we should be fine. Oh, Shriek is unfortunately a bit of a cooldown. Well, it is what it is, guys. Let's take them down one by one. Mercenary was killed. So we can't uh, bar uh, barrage a second time. Well, that's too too bad. At least we're draining their luck. Currently trying to finish off the guys with one and two hit points. They won't really stand a chance as long as they are in, uh, in cover, and as long as we are in cover actually. It's just going to be a shootout. And the faster we can get rid of most of them, the better. Great, that's one less to worry about. Yeah, they still have luck left over. Bit annoying uh, to go through all of them one by one. Specifically if they appear to have, have 100 luck each. I should have probably moved him over here and then shrieked because that would have killed all of them after the barrage. I'm wondering why couldn't we have another end boss? As much as I like to uh, to f uh, to fight against Zacharias, it would have been nice to see another end boss here. Specifically since these guys don't really pose a challenge, like after we initially um, ki almost killed them off, this year is just really finishing them. Reloading. Two of them are standing behind uh, the walls, that's okay. We're taking the opportunity to actually reload. Okay. Moving in. He takes the first damage, is at 50 luck at the moment. Which means we need to deplete his luck. So just a normal shot.
Next turn we can kill this guy. There we go. One more down. We know that there is one last enemy here in Zacharias. It's probably supposedly the end boss here. Okay, let's reload all of our weapons. Bingo and go. Moving in. Taking solid shots. We unfortunately missed this gentleman over there. Killing him, and I guess killing him as well. Yeah, if you do have such strong characters, there's really not much that stands in the way, specifically not these uh, uh, clowns. I guess I do understand why the scenarios aren't that long, because here's the deal. Um, if you do incredibly well on the first missions like we did, where you end up with giving your characters all of these boons. Then I guess the game can't really um, make the last missions difficult enough for you. For instance, this here Zacharias isn't really Vasquez that smiled. difficult. Surely the forces inhabiting the temple would accept this sacrifice. It was time to pass through the gates and fulfill his destiny. All right, it uh, seems though that we're going to be up for rude awakening on the other side. Wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing some demons. Moving in. Vasquez must enter the city. Okay, here we go. Smiling and relaxed, the Antichrist emerged from the temple. His teeth glinted in the red star's baleful light, and a spark danced in his eyes. This was his world now. <laughs> Everlasting fame and fortune. So he was the one unlocking it after all. Gosh, it's unclear who's responsible for what. So I like uh, the circularity of the whole uh, setup. It's not sure if the Grand Inquisitor uh, Cervantes, uh, who was the boss of Vasquez before he became the Masked Man, if he actually was uh, uh, already in contact with the demon, but apparently this was more the prelude, so probably Vasquez became the Masked Man and the Grand Inquisitor, uh, the Grand Inquisitor uh, then uh, killed uh, Solomon. So Vasquez was the masked man, and this is probably why that happened. He ultimately, uh, ultimately got gunned down by Warren. Uh, so it now makes sense, it's kind of a prelude. Uh, interesting way of presenting that prelude, by the way. Uh, which leaves us all wondering what is happening with um, Warren's father. And last but not least, was, uh, what's going to happen with Warren himself. 
This and more is going to be seen on uh, our further uh, missions. Uh, we have just played through the uh, scenario in Gold We Trust. The next one is going to be the Graveyard Shift, which is the second last scenario. Probably the last time that we're going to see uh, the father of Warren. And the last scenario is Warren himself in whatever shape or form. Thank you so much for watching today. That was The Hard West. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Thanks.